Have you been investing a little bit in real estate and are looking for that next area to invest? This in the third of three videos that I've done on this, I'm going to share with you some ideas for the little bit more experienced investor who's got a little bit more money to work with. So stay tuned to this episode. Let's say you get a little bit of experience under your belt. You've got a little bit more sizable amount of money to work with. This is where I would say, and, and this is where most people try and go first. This is where I would say that you go once you've had some experience is traditional rental properties. You go out there, you might find a bespoke off the rack property that doesn't really need a lot of work. It's in a great area. It fits your profile for your end renter and you buy that property, you put the down payment down, and now you're off to the races. You find a renter and you go. This can be a short-term strategy, a medium-term strategy, or a long-term strategy. The biggest thing is you it requires a larger investment. So what that means is your return on investment may not be as high as it is in some of the other investments, but it can also be pretty easy. And there's effectively four ways that you make money in this type of a transaction. Now, the first and foremost is the purchase and the sale. You're, there's going to be some kind of appreciation and value of that property over time, but you also make money from the rentals. You also make money from the amortization. Why? Because everybody, somebody's paying your mortgage every month and it's reducing your mortgage balance. So that means you make money because you're reducing your debt, meaning you have higher amount of equity. Effectively, every month, your equity automatically increases if the property didn't move at all in price. So that's three ways of making money. The final way of making money, and especially if you're somebody who has a higher income, is that you get the advantage of depreciation. Depreciation is effectively a tax strategy that is available to real estate investors. And that allows you to take a depreciation because assuming you're buying a property, although it might appreciate in value because of the market, all the stuff inside and the building is depreciating or it's slowly breaking down over time. So there's a, a IRS strategy for how much you can deduct each year of the value of the property. That gets put against, it's a tax deduction against earnings. So it can offset what you're making in the form of your rents on the property. So net, you have this in hand. Depreciation doesn't take anything out of your pocket. All it does is it just reduces your taxes. If it covers what you make or what you're making on the properties, earnings from rents, then that can be applied to other income that you're making. So for someone who has a relatively high income, this can also be a wonderful tax deduction for them because in the eyes of the IRS, they might be losing money on this property, even though they're taking in positive cash flow every month. So that's, that's a great way to get started. The second is commercial real estate. Commercial real estate requires considerable amounts of more of money, but you don't have to necessarily clean toilets. Most of the time, the people that rent from you in a commercial property are responsible for maintaining their own property. They're, you write that into their lease that they have to maintain the equipment there. They have to get things fixed. We're not going to come out and clean toilets for you, all that type of stuff. Um, typically, commercial rental, you know, commercial renters are pretty easygoing. They're not like your typical renter who is going to tear the place up. They typically take care of the properties because these are places of business in most cases. All right, last one, which is if you have a significant pool of money to work with, you can get into what's called a syndication or a real estate fund. These typically invest in things like apartment complexes, maybe commercial buildings, um, they're going to go in, acquire a property, let's say an apartment complex, do a little fix and flip or do a little fix on the property. They acquire the property, improve it, and then they can slowly raise the rents on that over time. So you as a real estate investor are coming in, getting part of that pool. You're not going to have to do anything other than that. You become a truly passive investor. You're hiring that team to go in, fix up the property, raise the rents. And then in most cases, 
they will start to distribute out as they earn as they earn income on the property they're going to start to distribute property out or distribute dividends out of that once they sell the property that the fund will kick back all that you've put into it plus whatever appreciation and profitability that's happened. So it's another way for people that have a little bit more experience or have more money and don't necessarily want to get into the nitty gritty of investing in real estate. It's a great way to do it. So there you have it. Three different ways. If you have no money, if you have some money, or if you have a lot of money or a significant chunk of money, three different ways with a bunch of different methods to really build your real estate portfolio. In my case, I started at that rental property mode because that's really what I knew. And I've expanded out into several of these other areas, finding them actually easier and less capital intensive for me over time. Um, and I would invite you to explore out. We'll be doing more of this type of stuff on both the podcast and the YouTube channels. So make sure that you are subscribers to both. And if you need any help, certainly feel free to give us some comments. Please subscribe and share this with somebody that you love that might need a little bit of help or be looking doing something like this. So thanks a lot. And we will see you back here the very next time. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed the information about real estate investing. If you've missed any of the episodes that we've done so far or you want to go back and watch them, just go down to the playlist, the Freedom Engines playlist on our YouTube channel, and all of them are there.